friends, welcome back. I am so glad you're here. We are going to finish up part two of our wrinkle series. Last time we talked about ways that wrinkles are caused, and then this time we're gonna look at ways that we can treat and hopefully prevent wrinkles from forming. So let's get to it. So today we're gonna talk about ways that we can treat and prevent wrinkles. And I wanted to point out my props so you are not alarmed by this strange head over here. This is actually a mannequin for um, hair cutters. So I had a student who um, owned a salon and she was doing a presentation in my anatomy class about meninges. So she cut this in half so she could label the meninges, which are the coverings of the brain and the spinal cord. But I'm going to use her today to show you ways that we can actually work on treating wrinkles. So we talked about four main things that cause wrinkles. We said there are things that you can prevent and things that you can't prevent. So things that you can prevent are things like aging. We said repeated facial expressions. And then things that we can prevent are exposure to UV and smoking. So if you ever heard the old expression, an ounce of prevention is worth a pound of cure, that's the same case for wrinkles. It's this idea that it's much easier to prevent something than actually to treat something later. So let's think about some of the things that we can prevent. So we didn't talk about this last time, but there are these circles that you have underneath your eyes. The circles get deeper over time due to the lack of this adipose tissue in that hypodermis that we talked about. And it's the case, and you probably know this, that the wrinkles underneath your eyes get deeper and darker if you don't sleep. So sleep is huge. That's a good way to help prevent some of those dark circles underneath your eyes. The other two things that we talked about that you can prevent are exposure to UV and smoking. So of course we know smoking is terrible for multiple reasons. Um, it causes all kinds of cancers, not even just lung cancer, but other cancers as well. So you want to stop smoking if you smoke now for prevention of cancers, but also to help prevent wrinkles from forming, and also try to eliminate your exposure to secondhand smoke as well. So stay away from other people that are smoking too. So that's number one. Number two, you wanna think about wearing a sunblock or sunscreen when you go out into the sun to protect you from your UV rays. So SPF stands for sun protection factor. You want to have at least a 30 on your face to help prevent those wrinkles. And it's really important to remember that we need to wear that not only in the summer, but also in the winter because you're exposed to those UV rays as well. So wear your sunblock. You also wanna think about wearing a hat. That's another good way to prevent those wrinkles from forming. So that's easy, right? Don't smoke, wear your sunblock. That's good. Now let's think about the other two factors that we can't control. We said general aging, right? So general aging, I've done a lot of research looking into things in papers and looking through literature and nobody has ever figured out how to stop aging. If you figure it out, you let me know and we will start a company and we'll be millionaires. Billionaires actually. <laughs> so aging is something that we can't prevent. Now again, if you think about things that you can do to slow down the aging process, you can do lots of things. Exercise, like we said, sleeping, eating right, antioxidant rich foods, those are all things that can help, but we can't stop the aging process. Now, what we can do is actually work on treating those repeated facial expressions. So we talked about the frown lines that form and the crow's feet that form from smiling. So there are different cosmetic procedures that we can actually use um, to help treat these wrinkles. Um, and their, their effectiveness varies depending on your genes. Um, but there are some things that seem to be quite effective. And one I wanted to talk about first, um, using our model here, is Botox. So Botox is an interesting um, commercial product and inside the Botox injections actually is the botulinum toxin and the botulinum toxin comes from the bacterial species Clostridium botulinum which is found in soil and water all over the place. Um, this when you are exposed to the botulinum toxin um, in foods, so if you have improperly canned foods, they're bulging in nature, you want to avoid those. If you ingest that as a person it leads to botulism which is probably something you've heard of. And botulism leads to paralysis of facial muscles, lots of other things, and it can lead to death due to uh, par paralysis of the respiratory muscles. It can be treated, which is good. So you wanna make sure that if you're canning stuff at home that you do it properly to avoid um, that problem. But the good thing is that you can actually use the botulinum toxin for multiple medical purposes. So people that have migraine headaches actually are using uh, Botox. Um, people that have twitching muscles, particularly around the eyes, can use Botox to stop the, the twitching of those muscles. Um, people that have excessive sweating can use Botox, which is interesting as well. And then of course we can treat the wrinkles. So we can treat the crow's feet around our eyes and we can treat um, the frown lines. So if I were a trained medical professional, um, which I am not a medical doctor, 
Um, but if I were, I can show you exactly how to do this. So we're going to use our little friend here. So if you're seeking out Botox, make sure you go to a licensed trained professional. Something interesting happened in the early 2000s. There were all kinds of Botox parties. And these Botox parties, people would host at their houses. They would buy these injections and give them to each other in non-sterile manners and drink alcohol at the same time. So all kinds of trouble arose from that. So do not go to a Botox party. Make sure you go to li licensed trained medical professionals. So I'll show you what you do. So if you want to treat the crow's feet around your eyes, they would take your your injection here and they would give you three injections around the eyes just like this. Um, if you're treating frown lines you would actually get one injection right between the eyes there. You would get one, two, three over here and then one, two, three over here as well. And what happens when I inject this into the facial muscles is that it paralyzes those facial muscles. The um, the toxin, the botulinum toxin, actually inhibits the neurotransmitter called acetylcholine. And acetylcholine is important for muscles for movement. And if I inhibit that, that's going to stop that. So it's going to essentially paralyze these muscles and not allow them to move. Um, and what happens then if you paralyze those muscles is that those creases and those wrinkles will smooth out. So with Botox, you actually start to see effects pretty quickly within a couple of days, and it lasts for up to about four months in some people. So if you want to keep these effects that you're seeing, and, and people do see good effects with the Botox, you have to go back over and over again to get more and more injections to make sure that's actually working. So that's one thing. Um, there's a lot of other cosmetic procedures that you can have done too. So there are um, lasers that you can use. There are um, chemical peels that you can put on um, the surface of the skin. And what you're trying to do is actually take that epidermal layer, that dead layer, and slough it off. And by sloughing that layer off, we actually induce more collagen to be formed in the middle, which again makes it more spongy and a little bit more elastic. So that can be done. There's something called um, microdermabrasion. Uh, microdermabrasion is also trying to remove that outer layer of skin. It uses a vacuum and crystals, these chemical crystals, that again are sloughing that outer layer of skin off. Um, you can use topical chemicals, things like Retin-A, alpha, hydro alpha hydroxy acids, um, vitamin C. These are all, again, trying to slough off those outer layers and trying to induce that elasticity to come back there. So there are a lot of different um, cosmetic procedures that you can use. Um, again, some of them are very costly. You want to make sure that if you're seeking treatment that you go to licensed professionals to get these things done. Um, because if you don't, again, if you go to a person, uh, go to that Botox party, um, you can end up with permanent facial paralysis, which is very terrible and you wouldn't want that to happen. Um, you've seen people that have had botched um, injections before. They, again, when they go to smile, there's, their face doesn't move at all. That can be a little bit scary. So we want to make sure that you're going um, to the right people. So if you have wrinkles and you want to treat these wrinkles, it's, again, a very good idea to make sure that you're going to people that are licensed and trained to, to give you all these treatments, the lasers, the Botox, you name it, with the chemicals. Um, but remember, prevention is best, right? So it would be awesome, and what I would love to do is, is get in Dr. Brown's time machine and go back and tell myself, hey, you should wear sunblock on your face instead of putting baby oil on your face, as we used to do when I was a kid. Um, but again, even now, it's best to wear that sunblock. Wear um, the floppy hats out in the summer. Uh, make sure that you're protecting your skin, and make sure you're staying away from cigarette smoke, not only for um, preventing wrinkles, but again, for your general health. Um, and remember, it's the case that I, I believe strongly that beauty comes from within. Um, you are beautiful. You're all beautiful people. Um, and having a few wrinkles on your face is not going to mar that. People are still going to see your inner beauty.